In this video, we talk about the Schrodinger equation for the particle in a 2D box. The particle in a 2D box is a natural extension to what we have done with the particle in a 1D box, which was a system like this. Okay, we have a box of potential in which the particle was simply moving from uh, 0 to some of L in just one axis, and then uh, the potential inside the box was 0, but then at the walls or outside was infinity. Right, so uh, the particle in a 2D box model is not very really different from the particle in a 1D box model. The only thing that is uh, significantly different is that the motion now is in uh, two dimensions. So the particle can move in a plane. Okay, now uh, that plane we're going to call it the XY plane, and then the box is going to have two lengths, LX and LY. Okay, All right, so that would be the box. And again, the potential uh, at the walls is infinity, and the potential inside the box is equal to zero. All right, so that would be the motion. Again, we're now trying to explain how a particle is going to be moving in just two uh, uh, dimensions, x and y. Okay, great. So as always, we have to set up the Schrodinger equation, solve it, and then examine what the energy and wave function solutions of the Schrodinger equation uh, will be. All right, so setting up the Schrodinger equation, uh, we have this. Uh, the Hamilton operator, as always, has two terms, uh, the kinetic energy term and the potential energy term. The potential energy term is zero, so we won't have to worry about this. And the question is, well, what is the kinetic energy term? Well, the kinetic energy term has kind of the same form as we, what we have seen for the particle in a 1D box, but you have to consider motion along two dimensions. Okay, so the kinetic energy, energy term is going to be a squared over a pi squared m. Okay, take the second derivative with respect to uh, motion along the x-axis. Okay, that will be the, Hamilton, uh, the kinetic energy term of a Hamilton operator for the particle in a 1D box. But if we want to study in two dimensions, x and y, then the only modification would be this. Okay, that is our uh, kinetic en energy term for the Hamilton operator. And again, uh, we can in principle try to uh, solve the expression. We're not going to do it in this video. We're simply going to look at the solutions and then uh, see what we can learn from there. All right, so the wave function uh, is going to uh, depend now on two quantum numbers. And this is something very important. Okay, going from uh, motion in one dimension to motion in two dimensions, the first modification is that uh, the wave function and the energy, they're now going to depend on two quantum numbers, okay, not only one. All right, and this is going to be equal to the square root of 2 over Lx sine of uh, Nx pi over x over Lx of x, and then square root of 2 over Ly sine of Ny pi over Ly y. Okay, so something that uh, uh, looks very interesting here is to notice that uh, this wave function seems to be the product of the wave functions uh, along one dimension uh, on each axis. Okay, again, uh, notice that this is uh, identical to what we have for the particle in a 1D box if it's moving in, a, in the x-axis, and this is the same thing as what we have for the particle in a 1D box if it's moving only along the y-axis. Okay, so the total wave function would be the product of two of those uh, wave functions. All right, uh, notice that now you have two quantum numbers which can vary independently. Okay, and x can go all the way from uh, 1 to infinity, and n y can go all the way from 1 to infinity. Okay. All right, now, uh, what about the energy uh, values? The energy values also depend on the two quantum numbers. Okay, so we're, we can write here n x and y and are going to be uh, nx squared, 8 squared, over uh, 8ml squared, okay, plus ny squared, 8 squared, over 8ly squared. Okay, so something interesting happens here as well. Notice that the energy uh, looks to be the sum of the energy of the energy that you would get if the motion was independent along the x or the y axis, this looks to be uh, simply the energy states 
of the particle in a Wally box mo uh, moving in the x-axis, and that seems to be the energy states of uh, the particle in a Wally box moving only on the uh, y-axis. These solutions are, are quite general. Okay? Uh, uh, for example, you could actually now infer uh, how things would be for a particle in a 3D box. Okay, in a particle in a 3D box, it would be very hard to represent graphically, but you could look at the wave function. What should happen is that you would, you would need a third quantum number for motion along the z-axis. Then the wave function would have here uh, a new term uh, multiplying this, which would depend on the uh, distance along the z-axis and on the quantum number in sub c. And then the energy term uh, would depend, uh, would have another term right here plus uh, that would depend on the quantum number along the c-direction and z-squared and then the uh, length along that uh, axis. Okay. So uh, anyways, that's, uh, this is uh, the results for the particle now to the box model. And again, the important thing here is to recognize how the transition from 1D to D3 to potentially 3D, how that, al that alters uh, the solutions to the surrender equation. Okay? Uh, moving on, uh, we can actually also see something that happens uh, to the energies if we make uh, the box square. Okay, if we make the box square, what happens is that uh, the length along the x-axis and along the y-axis is the same. Okay, so we can simply do uh, uh, simply L. Okay, and then uh, the energies uh, are going to be, let me erase this wave function, <coughs> nx squared plus ny squared, common factor of 8 squared over 8m l squared. Okay. And again, those quantum numbers can vary independently. Right, so we could then uh, try to order uh, these energy states in terms of increasing n. Okay, so which one is going to, going to be the lowest uh, energy state, and then what states are actually going to be higher. When you have the particle on a 1D box, this is very simple to do. The lowest energy state would be n is equal to 1. Uh, the next uh, energy state would be n is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. But now you actually have two quantum numbers to uh, worry about. So the question is, well, how does that uh, change for the product in a 2D box? Well, uh, obviously, the lowest energy state would be that in which both the nx and y, and y quantum numbers would be 1. Okay, and that uh, is for sure the lowest energy state. We call that the 1-1 one, one quantum, uh, the 1-1 one, one state. But again, this refers to nx, and that refers to ny. Now, when we look for uh, the next quantum, uh, the, the next energy state, the, ne the next quantum state, Okay, uh, we could either make this 2 and that 1, or make this uh, uh, 2 and this 1. Okay, but it turns out that the energy of those t two states would be exactly the same, because the term inside the parenthesis is identical. Right, so the next uh, energy state would be this. Right, that would be uh, 2, 1, or 1, 2. And again, the energy uh, of these two states is exactly the same. When you get this situation, you can say that these energy states are degenerate. Okay, so if you had that, uh, uh, there's uh, three particles in this box, and the energies are still can still be uh, captured in this um, uh, with this energy expression. Okay, well, I guess actually just rephrase the problem. Suppose that you have a particle right here, and then you want to uh, excite that particle to a high energy state uh, that has this energy. In principle, you actually have two states that you can land in that one or that one, and both states have exactly the same energy, I and mean, that's called the degeneracy. Okay? Now we could continue to try to see how the energy states uh, uh, pan up right here, and then we could try to see if uh, maybe the 2-2 two, two state has lower energy than the 3-1 or 1-3. We can see that if we have a 2-2 two, two state, then we'll have 2 squared uh, plus 2 squared, that will be 8, and if it's 3-1, it will be 3 squared, that is 9, plus 1 squared, 10, that energy will be higher. So the next energy state is going to be 2, 2, and then you will have 1, 3, 3, 1. Those also will be the generate. Okay, so uh, here we have illustrated how um, uh, the particle in our 2D box model works. We have looked at the wave function and the energy solutions, and we have introduced here the concept of the generacy. Things that are important here is to recognize that the number of quantum numbers increases with the number of dimensions, and that uh, uh, the energy states can be the generate. Now, we haven't talked much about the wave functions on, uh, other than to say that they seem to be products of motion along independent axes. Uh, but in the uh, description of this video down below, you will get a link 
to see the probability distributions of those wave functions, okay, or, or, or that particle, okay, the psi squared uh, of the wave function that we have looked at those, uh, and that will uh, link you to an external web page where you can see how those look like.